cramps are the worst, aren't they? Like, you go from training to barely being able to walk. Literally the worst pain imaginable. But lucky for you, I've done some research and in today's video, I'm gonna tell you why cramps happen and some ways to help prevent them. So, let's get started. Alright, first off, we need to understand why they occur. Scientists first believed that the main reason was due to an electrolyte deficiency, but this is only partly true. New evidence suggests that the reason you cramp up is because your body has reached a neuromuscular fatigue state. Now, the reasons why your body may reach a neuromuscular fatigue state could be for the following reasons. Your muscle fitness levels would be reason number one. As you may be aware, sometimes when you do some training, right, sometimes your muscles may not be used to being pushed to a certain extent, all right? Maybe it may not be used to having as much volume as you may like to train to. I know sometimes for myself, there'll be days where I might train extra hard or add, you know, extra volume one time just because I'm just feeling it. You know, I'll do that, say on a leg day, and then I'd feel like I really work my legs that day. And as a result, I push my body to that extent where it wasn't really used to being pushed. And then all of a sudden, cramps. To avoid that, keep consistent with your training, slowly increase your volume if your volume is leading you to cramping up, or you could even just reduce the amount of volume and see if you can achieve the same result with less volume. It's always important to understand your limits and push past your preconceived limits, but respect the boundaries so then you don't always get injured because obviously there's a fine line between obviously wanting to push yourself, which I'm all for, but then all of a sudden you push yourself too, too much. And as much as we like to think that we're superheroes, it can lead to injuries. Reason number two is because your muscles are depleted of glucose and glycogen. Now, essentially, they're just sugars and energy for your muscles, right? The preferred energy source, carbohydrates, sugars, they get broken down. When you either have a really intense strenuous exercise or you've been dieting down, you've been cutting down, maybe reducing a bit of your carbs and your muscles are depleted of glycogen, that can play a factor into your body actually reaching a neuromuscular fatigue state, then it can lead to your body actually cramping up. The best thing you can do in this instance, whether you're cutting down, whether you're bulking, is save some carbs for post-workout, but high glycemic, simple sugar carbs that can be rapidly absorbed and digested into your body. After your workout, they say that your muscles are in a spongy state so they can rapidly absorb the carbohydrates that you eat. Hopefully that helps reduce your chances of cramping up. Now, reason number three. To help prevent cramps, the stretch. There's two types of stretching. There's dynamic and static stretching. For those who don't know, dynamic stretching is where you move and you're not actually holding the muscle in place. And then a static stretch is when you bend down, try and touch your toes, and then you sit there for like 20, 30 seconds and hold it, that's a static stretch. Dynamic stretches are really important to do before your workout because it helps with the blood flow and it helps warm up the actual muscles. It helps prevent injury and that is important, especially when you're doing a heavy intense exercise session, no one wants to get injured. Post-exercise, it's important to do some static stretching because it helps relax the muscles and it helps wind them down. In a later video, I'll go through the best stretches for you guys. Now it's really important to remember that your body actually requires salt and water in order to function and especially when doing intense exercise. And when doing really intense exercise, you end up losing both of them through your sweat. Now water and salt can interact with each other in different ways. In simple terms, the salt can actually dry out the water or the water can actually absorb the salt. So there's your problem. Having too much water can actually flush out your electrolytes, but then not having enough water can cause dehydration, and in both instances, they lead to cramps. But there are two solutions when trying to replenish your electrolytes. The first solution is by getting your electrolytes through natural healthy foods. Some of them can be from 
spinach, avocados, broccoli, watermelon, oranges, bananas. But even when having a diet that consists of all those, we may not be getting enough electrolytes. So instead, to supplement my electrolytes, right, is I like to use these two products. First one being Staminade, an electrolyte sports drink, right? And the second one being these fasting salts. Just a heads up guys, just wanted to let you know that I'm actually not affiliated or sponsored by any of the products or companies mentioned in this video. The products that I do mention are my recommendations from what I use in my daily life and what I suggest you to use. I just wanted to be real and transparent with you guys and if ever there's a sponsor or I'm paid to advertise something, you'll definitely know. Now, back to the video. Both have pros and cons into using each. I will cover in depth in another video, but essentially, what you guys need to know is that by consuming either or of these products, they help replenish your electrolytes, which in turn help prevent cramping. Now, I'd also like to be a little real with you guys, right? I'd like to tell you my experience when it comes to cramping because growing up, I used to experience cramps quite a lot and they were just so painful, so tremendously painful. You know, a lot of people told me all different things and how to fix it, but essentially it was just a temporary fix and then it was a matter of time till I experienced my next cramp. So what I'm trying to say is the main issue that I realized that helped me prevent cramps was keeping on top of my electrolytes, whether I be taking some of these fasting salts or whether I be taking some of this staminade, right? Either or by ensuring I'm taking my electrolytes, especially when I'm doing an intense workout, especially when I know I'm gonna be sweating excessively, I can go in with confidence and I can finish my workout in confidence knowing that I'm not gonna be cramping up. I know I did a lot of research and this is what the research says, but I'm saying anecdotally, what's really helped me was ever since I've really started taking electrolytes as a supplement, I've never really had a cramp. And saying that, yes, in my previous video in the organ pipes, I did have a couple cramps. And looking back at that, I can say that there was probably multiple reasons why the crampings occurred. I mean, I've never really pushed myself to that extent. My average cardio session, I'd do it for about an hour, right? So doing it for about three hours, yes, I was pushing my muscles, probably depleted of glycogen. And my electrolytes, I was trying to replenish my electrolytes as much as I could. Looking back, I could have been losing more sweat, losing more bodily fluids, losing more electrolytes than I was actually replenishing from the drinks. I do say that after those cramps, I did replenish and hydrate myself. In doing so, the cramps didn't last long and I got back up on my feet. If this video helped you out, please smash the like button, comment down your thoughts below. Let me know whether this actually helped out your cramping problems. If you like this content, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Yeah, let's get started. Are you? Oh, bro, man, go on that one. That's a fucking. Okay, I thought you were like intentionally like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I you were no, I actually full landed on my ankle. What the hell?